What's going on guys? Pete again. So, round number two, second video on the Jay-Z build. This will apply to all engines. Today, what I'm gonna show you is once you get your block back, okay, your engine block, that's what I'm talking about. Before you start building the block, I'm gonna show you things that are critical to do that will save you a lot of time. They'll save you time, they'll save you headaches. And what it involves is that when you get it back from the machine shop, hopefully they hot tank the motor for one, uh, you know, obviously board and, you know, put nice cross hatching in the cylinders. Hopefully they deck the block if the block wasn't true, especially if it's an aluminum block. And uh, this one also got line honed as well. You guys catch my drift. But even with all of that, there's things that you want to do before you start putting the, the parts in the engine. This block in particular has actually been sitting for, well, when did I stop making videos? Like nine months ago. So this block's been sitting for like six months. All right, here's what we got. <clears throat> so classic GE block. You guys are definitely familiar with 2Js. Probably, maybe you're not. Uh, I did paint this block um, when I got it back. And then I put, uh, with the engine enamel, the high temperature stuff, it should stay black for a while. It's not a perfect job, but it does look better than the rusty shit. So, all right. So flip this all around. We got a brand new machined surface on the top here. I tape this off. Make sure you tape this off and the bottom end off. If you're going to paint it, you see, I still got little paint debris on the edges, but Basically, looking at this block, a lot of you guys pull out, you know, maybe you're doing an LS build, maybe you're doing a Jay-Z, whatever it may be, maybe it's a junkyard motor. Well, a lot of times, here's what happens. The bolt holes, okay, so like the threaded areas on the block will have rust in them, they'll have grime in them, debris, all sorts of stuff like that. Maybe they had paint in them because you didn't tape them off. You guys get what, where I'm getting at. As well as the head studs, that is another major area. If the block has been sitting, they will rust. And you'll look right here and you'll be like, oh, that looks perfectly fine. But then as you try to drive the bolt down and torque it, it starts binding. It starts affecting your actual values. Another thing I'm going to talk about is basically taking the edges down, okay, or deburring is what I call it. Because one of the things I can tell you right now, the bottom of the block does not get decked, okay? This, this surface does not get milled down. Nothing changes with it. You might have dowels that are effed up. You need to make sure your prep is proper. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to chase all the bolt holes. And then I'm going to take all the edges down around the whole corner. We're going to clean the living crap out of it because you do not want that metal debris floating around anywhere in the motor, especially when you go to install it. Super, super simple, okay? I'm gonna take the edges down on the outside. We'll start here so you guys can see. And just like so. So as you guys can see, nice deburred edge all the way around. Okay, next, coolant passages. I don't know how well my camera is gonna focus here. The coolant passages are always gonna have crap in them, okay? So you need to make sure that they are nice and clear. Go and pick you up a set like this. Little pipe cleaner drivers. What we're gonna do, not only can we clean the threads out, but we can also clean the coolant passages out. Because the cleaner the coolant passages are, the better thermal efficiency the coolant's gonna have running through the block. All right, let's give it a whirl. Ready?
You see all that crap? And keep going. Look at all the dust on this one. Same kind of thing. And to clean these little side ports, I just get on the side and just like that. Same with these. The other thing I'm going to do is if you guys see in the actual jackets, okay, so what those are is they're the water jackets for the actual cylinder. I'm going to run this down in there, and you're going to see a lot of this dust. Ready? So we went from that, where we got coolant crap residue everywhere, to that, which is way cleaner. I mean, look at this one. Look at that one. You want to get all as much out of there as you possibly can. And that's the point I'm trying to convey to you guys. So I'm going to keep on doing this. No sense in filming all of it. We'll circle back once it's clean. I found something perfect example to show you. And this is something that you would not, no one would have seen had you not gone in here and started cleaning. I'll show you. And it's right down there. Now you guys can see. So what I did is I just dug a pick into that. You see all that debris? Okay. Those are residue pockets from lack of maintenance, bad coolant, debris, etc. So I'm trying to get my pick in from the other side. So you can see my pick here. Okay. You see how it kind of crumbles? And this isn't a boroscope, you guys. I'm doing my best here. But what that is, is that stuff that's taking up space in the water jackets that might flow through, might clog in a crevice, might have been what the residue was in these little pockets here. But basically, you never know what's in here. And if you were just one of those guys where you're like, oh, they hot tanked it and I got it back from the machine shop, time to slap it together. Well, that's all stuff you would have never ran into. You wouldn't have known was in there. So now what we're doing... The bolt holes, the thread holes are pretty clean. If they were rusted, we would be chasing them with a real tap. However, they're not that bad. So what I'm doing is I'm just running a stud in and out. But as you can see, like, you got some little rusty brake cleaner residue right there. So what I did is I fill them up just a hair, just a baby amount in the bottom of brake cleaner. And that is solely uh, to help push the crap up as the bolt drives down. So, show you an example. We'll go to this one. Run it a couple threads. Switch your ratchet. And uh, this little ratchet isn't enough to, like, overpower or, you know, like, force the uh, any fluid down below where the threads are. You get a big impact and you start doing that kind of stuff. with an, Not with this block, an aluminum block. You can actually crack the block because you put liquid in there. You try driving the bolt down. It builds so much pressure the fluid's got nowhere to go and it can split the block. So you got to be really careful with that kind of stuff. All right, next thing's next. So, we're staring at the mains right now. Every engine has a main girdle, main caps, whatever you want. Whatever you want to call it. So, pull all the bolts out. See the bolts that have rust on them? They, those need to be cleaned up. Stock bottom end, Jay-Z motor. Main caps can hold all the power you'll throw at it unless you're four-digit power. Then I would recommend going a different avenue at that point. Now, what you want to do 
is pull these off and inspect the thread holes. I would still recommend cleaning them just to be cautious. But as you're threading them out, if they don't thread in and out easily, that's a major, major problem. That's going to affect your torque value when you go to put it together. This one in particular, as I was unthreading it by hand, I was like, ooh, it's binding up. Well, I'll show you why. It's because there's rust in the thread holes. Those are the kind of things that you need to watch out for before you put the motor together, okay? So what I'm going to do at this point, we still haven't even thoroughly cleaned the block yet. So we're still a little hike away from actually assembling. But what we're going to do is we're going to do what we did with those other bolt holes. I'm going to run, run my little bits in it. Probably this nylon one with some brake cleaner, something like that. And then I'll, you know, if they're really bad, I'll go to like the, the wire brush. But you're going to clean them all out, flush them out with brake cleaner or something equivalent. Get it so there is no rust in them so that you can glide a bolt in, glide a bolt out. Because these bolts, if they're binding while you're trying to torque them, the torque value is not going to be correct. And the last thing you want is the area with the most amount of stress on the entire engine to have a bolt that is not torqued properly. Huge problem. So... I'm going to go ahead and pull all these caps. Make sure you realize how they're orientated. Now, this is for, like, straight-up beginners, but if you see this groove here, okay, you're going to see a little tongue, a little lip groove. That's where the bearing sits, okay? Very hard to get backwards, but make sure that this lip groove here is on the opposing side, if you, if you understand what I'm trying to say. So this lip groove cannot be lined up identically with where it is right here. Most engines, you can't even get away with doing that, but I feel like it's relevant to bring up because it's definitely something you need to pay attention to. And the other thing is the order of which they, they, that you read them, okay? So like on a Jay-Z, you're standing on the back of the motor, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do is clean all these oil passages out. So we're gonna clean each and every one of these oil passages. Last thing we want, we go to break the motor in. We got shit or debris in there. It gets into the oil pan, somehow gets through the strainer, gets into the pump, shoots it into one of the bearings. No bueno. So. Make sure that you're uh, punctual about all this. Make sure all your sealing surface is clean. Again, I'm gonna hit this with about probably 800, maybe a little 600 right there. It looks like it got nicked. Uh, but we're gonna get it all cleaned up, get all the threads cleaned up. New day. We're going to have to listen to that garage heater today. It is freezing outside, but uh, here's where we're at. Uh, what I did last night is took 800 grit just lightly, well, very lightly. We are not trying to take material out. We're just trying to get a nice flat surface. So I lightly sanded and cleaned all of these uh, mains right here. So now what the next step is, okay is I got all the bolt holes cleaned, okay? What I did is I soaked them in uh, WD-40. I ran them in and out, the bolts in and out twice, cleaned them out with brake cleaner. I still gotta clean the rest of this out, flip it upside down, actually brake cleaner it the right way. So we got the bottom of the deck clean. Now what we're doing is we're getting the top of the deck absolutely spotless before we do our final blowout of everything. So what this is, this is thousand grit. That is as coarse as I would recommend going. So what I'm saying is you could use 2000, 3000, etc. And if you guys look, you see how you can kind of see the machining marks now? 
That's kind of what we're after. We want this to be absolutely spotless on the top of it. So once we get that done, we're gonna give this thing another shower and brake cleaner. We've already done the bottom, right? So we're gonna shower the top of this and brake cleaner. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna blow compressed air through every single passage and make sure this thing is clean, clean. Oh, I just showered the top and brake clean. This is where it starts to get messy. You can't be afraid of getting messy. But basically what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start with the coolant passages and I'm gonna make sure I blow through every single one. Time for something extremely critical, okay? You see all these holes on the mains. Those are the feeds for your main bearings. It is absolutely critical that there is no debris, no metal particulates, absolutely no nothing inside these holes. So while you have it upside down, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill brake cleaner in this little passage right here and shoot it into these holes and then I'm going to blow them all up. That's gonna do it for this video. Stay tuned for the next one. These are all gonna come out real quick because this motor is getting put together within a week time spread so the video should not be much more spread out than that so see you guys later on thanks